This afternoon, I'm just going to end off my presentation, which I started this morning. I'm going to talk a bit about the future of the IGF and also tell you what we've been doing for the Nairobi meeting. Now, the IGF had um, its initial mandate for five years, starting off in 2005 after the WSIS, and then the United Nations General Assembly in its resolution 6514 um, renewed the IGF mandate for a further five years so that it ends in 2015. Now, 2015 is rather significant because that is the year that the whole WSIS review takes place um, because um, the IGF is one of the outcomes of WSIS, but we also had action lines uh, that came out of WSIS. So that's all going to happen in 2015. When the General Assembly renewed the mandate for the IGF, um, they had one small caveat that um, there would be a commission to look, a working group to look into further improvements of the IGF. As I said before, previously in my morning presentation, there were some concerns expressed about um, outputs for the IGF and also developing country participation, etc. So they set up um, a commission by the Commission on Science and Technology for, the, for Development. And this commission is a subsidiary body of ECOSOC. Uh, sorry, this is alphabet soup for the UN, uh, for you guys. Um, that is the Economic and Social Council. Now, the CSTD... Um, is the body that gives high-level advice on the relevant science and technological issues uh, to ECOSOC, and ECOSOC reports, of course, to the General Assembly. It is made up of governments. The, working, uh, the CSTD uh, Working Group on the Improvements of the IGF was established um, in December uh, 2010, and it was given the mandate to come up with recommendations for the improvement of the IGF. Uh, and it was given until May this year to report to the uh, CSD session. Uh, the working group did not have enough time to come up with recommendations, and it did not complete its work. So in the CSTD meeting, it was recommended that the working group be extended for a further year. And this is in the CST re report, which is going to go to ECOSOC. And as Merlin has said previously, ECOSOC is meeting. Also, there are some members of the working group here. Uh, one of them is sitting on this stage. <laughs> um, guest member. A guest member, yes. Uh, the working group is made up of governments, but there's also representatives from the various uh, stakeholder groups were, were invited to take part. So we have to wait until next year to find out what the recommendations are. And I've been sitting in these sessions, and my only concern there is that the recommendations should be attached to the resources at hand, because there were many good ideas, but we, we also need the, res the IGF Secretariat needs the resources as well to implement these ideas when they come out. Now, the, my next topic is the IGF meeting in Kenya. The IGF uh, meeting is the sixth meeting, and it's the first of this mandate, current mandate. It's going to take place on the 27th to 30th of September at UNON, that's the United Nations headquarters in Nairobi. The main theme is Internet as a Catalyst for Change, Access, Development, Freedoms, and Innovation. There's going to be over 90 events. There's going to be workshops, as we have in the national IGFs, uh, best practices, open forums, dynamic coalition meetings. Now, dynamic coalitions are something that came out of the IGF. Uh, they were not planned for, but it is a grouping of like-minded individuals, companies, and countries that come together to work on a specific issue, just uh, such as child online safety, 
uh, internet and climate change, any issues, um, you get a grouping of multi-stakeholders to come in and discuss the issue and work on it. And there's also the IGF village, where uh, organizations can show their internet governance um, activities in the IGF village. One major part of the IGF meetings is also that the value is at the edges. It's not just the events, it's also the meeting with people because here you have people who, as the saying goes, come out of their silos and can talk to each other. And so we say that the value of the IGF meeting is also at the edges. For those of you who can't make it to Nairobi, uh, we have uh, made a lot of effort for the remote participation. Our main tool is WebEx, which was kindly donated by Cisco, and all the sessions will be uh, transcripted, real-time transcription. You can follow it over the internet. Um, it's very low bandwidth uh, because it's just plain text. If you've got a web browser, you can follow. Um, it's going to be webcast as well. Uh, and you can also come in with email and l listen through the Twitter. We've also got hubs. Now, hubs are uh, countries or national IGFs or interested people can get together and come into a room like this and connect to the IGF meeting uh, through the remote participation, through WebEx, and they can take part in the meeting. Uh, we have the main sessions. The hubs are there. They're given time. They follow it online. Um, it can be projected on a screen here, what's going on at the main meeting, and each um, hub is given a chance to participate in the meeting, ask questions, and interact with the meeting. So if people here at Georgetown want to form a hub, I please I encourage you, and in any other school, um, you can just ask me for details. Everything you want to know about the IGF is here on, the, uh, on our website. I encourage you to visit the website, and also um, the registration procedure is there. So please uh, visit our website or come and speak to me afterwards, and I strongly encourage you all to get involved and either come to Nairobi or use one of the remote participation facilities that we are setting up. Thank you.